high fans of high quality entertainment. Welcome to my latest review and ranking, this time for McCartney 2, which came out in 1980. I was actually in California in 1980 when I bought McCartney 2 and Bob Dylan's Saved, which was his follow-up to uh, Slow Train Coming, which I absolutely loved. It was quite disappointing, as was McCartney 2 at the time. 40 years ago. But my opinion on this has changed ever since ever since I got the this box set in the remastered version. I know I sometimes go on about remastered albums or whatever. That doesn't always mean <laughs> I'm gonna like them more. For instance, Pipes of Peace, I had bought the uh, box set for that thinking it would improve with age, but so far it hasn't. But I need to listen to it once or twice more before I do the upcoming review on that. But anyway, McCartney 2, before I get into the songs and everything, I will rate the album cover and the production and everything first. So the production, it's pretty good for being a, like McCartney's debut album, home, homemade recording. The production I give an 8 out of 10 to. The album cover, not, not one of my favorites, uh, but it's, you know, it's still, it's eye-catching for sure, especially when it was on vinyl. So, an 8 out of 10, and that's kind of cool with the shadows. And the lyrics, uh, for Paul McCartney, they're a 7 out of 10. They're not bad. There's some songs I prefer, you know, the lyrics are better than other songs, but... For instance, Temporary Secretary, I, I think the lyrics in that are quite inventive. Ah, speaking of Temporary Secretary, that is my favorite song. Although I had a hard time picking a favorite song because there's actually quite a few songs that I really love on this now. And my least favorite song, I struggled with. I finally chose Front Parlor. And what's funny about that is after I chose it and I was on Spotify at the time and I was just going through the songs again and Front Parlor, Front Parlor came on and think, oh, this, is, this sounds good. I like this one. And then, oh, that's the one I chose as my least favorite. <laughs> and this is going to surprise some of you. It would have surprised me back in the day. I give McCartney 2 an A friggin' plus. I know I, I had a recent comment from somebody, I think it was for one of the Paul McCartney reviews, saying that I, I, I use the A, you know, he takes it more seriously than I do, I guess, and he says, uh, I shouldn't just hand out A pluses so easily, but I disagree. And I do take, I do take it seriously, the music. I take music very seriously. But this album, from start to finish, I love it all. I have nothing to complain about. So I give it an A+. That's my, my rank. But like I also told this guy, it's just entertainment. I don't, I don't take the reviews and the rankings seriously, but I take music seriously. Uh, this one is number 13635. Anybody out there cares about that kind of stuff? And back in 1980, I was watching some TV show. I th no, I was watching Saturday Night Live, first of all. And Paul and Linda were at the beginning of it. And they were being interviewed. And he mentioned Sparks, you know, for the coming up video. And it startled me. It's like, he knows who Sparks are. And then, I might have seen the video actually before that. I was absolutely shocked because I'm a big fan of Sparks when I saw him impersonating Ron Mayo in the coming up video. And uh, Brian Ray, who's Paul McCartney's guitarist, was telling me, because uh, I did a video for him a few years back, uh, that he, oh, he, that Brian Ray is friends with Ron and Russell Mayo of Sparks. And I guess at one point, 
he got Paul McCartney to sign a picture of him as Ron Mayle and he sent it to, he gave it to Ron Mayle. You know, a nice autograph and a little something on it, a little saying. I love this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at the pictures. Like that. So, coming up, I love the live version, of course, and it's pretty well known that John Lennon, I think John Lennon had heard the live version of coming up, and that kind of, and he, and he loved the song, or it might have been the studio version, I'm not sure which he heard, but that got him to come back and make Double Fantasy. It takes a lot to impress John Lennon, especially with Paul McCartney. But yeah, he loved coming up and I loved the song uh, and of course the video. Temporary Secretary. I know that's a hit or miss for McCartney fans, but I've always loved it. And it's and the production on that is a 10 out of 10. On, on the way, see some of these songs back in 1980, I just I thought they were just mediocre and didn't really care for them, but now I love On The Way, it's a bluesy track. Waterfalls is gorgeous, I love that song. Nobody Knows is funky, I love that. Front, pal front Parlor, an instrumental, my least favorite on the album, but I still love it, it's very catchy. Summer's Day Song is very nice, Frozen Jap. That's what it's called. I don't think it would be released as Frozen Jap these days, but he, he didn't, you know, he didn't mean anything by that. It was just back in more innocent times, I guess. Another really cool instrumental. Bogey music is, I can see where some people wouldn't like it, and it is a bit annoying, but I love, <laughs> I love some annoying music, I guess. And yeah, I just enjoy it. Dark Room is really cool. Uh, and one of these days, which I almost picked as my favorite song, is a really nice way to, to end the album. It's kind of like a typical, great Paul McCartney ballad. And uh, it's really sweet. So yeah, I love McCartney 2. Uh, so yeah, overall, McCartney 2 is a great, great album and a superb follow-up ten years later to his debut album McCartney. In fact, in my rankings, which I almost forgot about, it, McCartney 2 goes between London Town and Venus and Mars at number five. So I would love your thoughts on McCartney 2 section below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.